happy to see a lot of folks in the audience. It's nice to have uh, people down and participate. Oftentimes we're nearly alone, so this is a pleasant, pleasant change. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, we're going to start uh, first with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll lead that if you would join me, and followed by the invocation for, with Mr. Hobart. Please join me in the pledge. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Father, we are here today to ask for your blessings and guidance in the performance of our duty as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interest of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Chair will accept a motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second, please. Have a motion. Mr. Cord, the second, Mr. Brock. All in favor, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. First part of our agenda is the presentation and delegation section. And we lead off this evening with the Griffin Spaulding Honor, our KIA committee, to present certificates of appreciation to city commissioners. Mr. Mel. Uh, good evening, Mayor Mar and, and board. We want to first of all thank you so very much for uh, helping us and for being there and allowing us to post plaques. This is for the soldiers that uh, did not return, Griffin and Spalding County soldiers that did not return from World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and also the War on Terror. What we're doing is honoring a number of these soldiers every year. And we thank you for this commitment for allowing us to post the plaques uh, on, on the uh, uh, various city properties here uh, in the historic district. But this is something that the families have really appreciated. And uh, we wanted to honor these men, and there was one lady this past year, uh, not how they died, but how they lived. And we wanted everyone to know that. But thank you for that, and I've got some certificates, and I would like to get a picture if we could. Certainly. Thank you. How do you want the picture? What are you looking for? Sir? How do you, what do you want the picture? What are you looking for? I guess to come down there. You want us to all come down or not? Thank you, Mr. Melton. We appreciate that. And we're proud that you're doing what you're doing in the committee. We thank you. Item number two is to recognize our customer service uh, department 2015 Strongest Link Award recipient. And before I invite uh, Mr. Bysh up any further, hold on just a second. I want to say this to the assembled audience. 
Each month, we have the distinct honor to recognize one of our employees as part of the strongest link. Uh, the chain, the city service is no weaker than the, uh, no better than the strongest link, and we have every year 12 amazing employees that give their all to the city, and we're so proud of them. And then each year, we pick from that 12 the uh, most distinguished, which is uh, incredibly difficult uh, choice, but the distinguished is the strongest link of the chain for award for the entire year. And for 2015, we are honored that this goes to Rita Bagwell. So, Mr. Bice, would you continue that, please? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And thank you very much to, uh, for leading us in. And, and if I could have Rita and Laura and any of the team come up, um, and while they're coming up, I'll I'll say a few words, and I apologize for my voice. It's it's my best Barry White, and we'll see what I can do here. Um, the <laughs> baby, baby. Uh, but um, when uh, Mr. Smith brought this this up to us months ago, and um, constantly reminded us of of to be looking inside our our ranks and and two or three times that, that I personally sat and thought who on my team or who in the entire city would I think about uh, um, giving this award to. And each time Rita came to mind. Um, we had a challenge. Um, we like to think we're like ducks on the water and you see a, a calm group of individuals, um, but we're paddling like crazy underneath. and. So we had a challenge in our billing department, and, and one of our, our family uh, left us and, and went on to retire and left a, a hole in our billing department. Um, we, that is not an easy job. Um, we bill for all the departments in the city, uh, electric, water, sewer, um, and, and, and as you know, billing for Brandt isn't easy. So... Um, <laughs> This is, uh, you know, we send out, oh gosh, what, 25,000, 27,000 bills a month. Uh, and with that, we send out six, seven, eight thousand notices a month. Um, we deal with electric rates, we deal with water rates, we deal sewer rates, we deal, you know, solid ways. Um, I cannot say enough about coming in um, with no experience in our billing department taking over and managing that department, um, doing new policies, new procedures, and not only taking over the position, but excelling and even making it better. Um, she had two great individuals uh, that work on her team and, and helped her, um, and then the excellent management of Ms. Stewart. So uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, uh, give the 2015 Strongest Link Award to Rita Bagwell. Like Bill said, um, when we were informed that the billing department was going to be short of a supervisor, um, one, we were surprised. But Rita, not only did she, she left an area that she could, it was like I put in my write-up, she left an area that she could do the job blindfolded. She was in her comfort zone. Um, she didn't have to think about the job that she did, but she saw the need in customers, I mean, in the billing department. Um, she didn't necessarily want to go to the billing department. She was almost like starting over. She was um, going to have to learn the job, but she was going to have to learn it from the employees that she would be supervising, which is a tough job to have to do. But she saw the need in the customer service department. So she stepped up to the plate and she went back there and it was a challenge every day to, um, to clean up some items that needed to be cleaned up, to put some processes into place. And what I thought was going to be a, probably a six month job, she's already achieved in two to three months. So she's amazed even me um, where I never doubted she'd do it. 
she amazed me and did it faster than I thought she would do. So um, she's a pretty special lady, and we're lucky to have her, um, not just the customer service department is lucky to have her. The city is lucky to have her. So um, I was thrilled to make the nomination, and I was even more excited that the directors chose it. So, Rita, congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Can I speak? Can I say something? Well, that's what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, okay. We want you to have this, too. Oh, the, thank the you. Year, so. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. You do Appreciate such a wonderful that. job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Y'all know how to make your ladies feel special. Um, first of all, I am known for my note-taking skills, as my coworkers say, read its soliloquies. Um, so for this special occasion, I made a few notes. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners, for this recognition tonight. I would also like to say thank you to my manager, Laura Stewart, for nominating me for this honor. As she mentioned in her write-up for my recommendation, I was in my comfort zone as the contract desk supervisor, and the past several months as the billing department supervisor has been somewhat tedious. I appreciate the acknowledgement, and I know now I'm where I need to be. Thanks to all the directors and city manager who supported Laura's nomination. That support confirms the level of confidence you all provide to us in the billing department. And I say us. I'm not one person in the billing department. I represent a team. I would like to say special thanks to my teammates, Megan Beaton and Leslie Taylor. These ladies have unified the billing department into a team and have been respons responsible for teaching me how to bill. They've been patient with me while I've learned from my errors and tried things that did not necessarily work. Thank goodness for the things that did. My pastor has challenged our church all year to be all in. He's given us a chip that reminds us, give it your all in everything you do. My chip resides on my keyboard in my office. The billing department, I can assure you, is all in and we are giving you all we have. I'm humbled to receive this prestigious award. I gladly accept it on behalf of the customer service department and the billing team. Thank you so much. I'm all in, and our department, customer service, our team is all in as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you again, Rita. <coughs> the next order of business is our citizen comment period. Let me read the official statement as we do each meeting. At this time, the chairperson opens the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to a concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The chairperson reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. This evening uh, we have um, embarrassment of riches here. We have a lot of people want to talk. We'd appreciate that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll call you up as you sign in. I would ask that you keep your comments relatively brief. We don't want to cut you off, but we have uh, a lot of folks who want to speak and a lot of business to do. So uh, we'll start with Alethea Reed, 422 Hammond Drive. Ms. Reed. Yes, ma'am. Would you come forward and uh, speak?
speak in the microphone there so we can record your comments for the record, please. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm Jalitha Reed. I am just concerned about the city as a whole. Uh, you said stick to the uh, comments about what's going on in the city. But I would like to compose a question. Who do I go to if it's not pertaining to this, what's on the uh, board? Uh, who do I talk to if I want to talk to somebody? Do I go to the city manager that's over everything? Because well, I never really got the understanding about it because there's some questions that I need, but it's not on here. Well, if, if you want to go on and ask your questions or address it, I don't know how to answer your question or what it is you want to know. I'm, I mean, I came here to support uh, my nephew-in-law pertaining to uh, the decision that was made about the hiring yes, of the police chief. And uh, the question that I have, do I have to just uh, go to the city manager or do I talk to you all? You, you may speak to us about it. And I'm, y'all, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But the thing about it is I was concerned about why did the person that was hired was hired, you know, from outside. Was it not anybody that had the qualifications for the inside? That's what the process, the process was designed to hire the most qualified person we could find. Yes. So regardless. Regardless. So it didn't, it didn't make any difference whether you had been uh, a pl- employee uh, 30 years. Did that, that didn't make a difference. And had, had been uh, the assistant to a chief of police, that didn't make a difference. All I can say is, I don't quite know how to answer that, but all the applications went into the process. And out of that process came the final choice. So how was the choice made? I mean, I still don't understand. The city manager made the choice, right? Um, Kenny, yes. did, you, did we have so many people that want to speak about it, can you just give a brief description beforehand of the process so that everyone will understand as they come up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'll be glad to do that. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Uh, the process was determined early on after Chief Heaton resigned. Uh, the commissioners made a decision to contract with the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police to provide an assessment center in which, uh, first of all, applications were received in-house. We sent all those applications to the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police. That association then narrowed the qualified candidates down to the number eight. Those eight most qualified candidates were then put through an assessment center, uh, which was handled by the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police. They sent me the results from that assessment center with all the scores. Uh, after that, I compiled a interview board, an interview panel to interview those candidates. We started with the top four candidates to work our way down through process of elimination, starting with the top scoring candidate in that assessment center. So we interviewed uh, the top scoring candidate, the second top, third top, and fourth top as a beginning point in our process. Uh, After that, one candidate rose to the top of the list. Uh, We did some preliminary background work the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation did some preliminary background work for us and gave us that information. We did some preliminary background work ourselves. Uh, we got that interview panel back again the second time and went over that preliminary in, uh, background investigation. That candidate uh, still rose to the top of the list. Uh, after that, we did some in-depth background investigation Uh, After that in-depth background investigation, the interview panel got back together a third time to go over all of the information. Uh, The number one candidate continued to rise to the top and ultimately was the finalist.
for the position and was subsequently offered the position. Okay, and all this is public record? Yes, ma'am, that's okay, correct. And we can get uh, copies? Absolutely. Okay, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Shahir Bayah is with us, former commissioner. Mr. Bayah. Address is 820 Pamela Drive. Good evening, Mr. Sure. Bia. Good evening. Glad to have you back with us. Well, well thank you. First of all, uh, I want to say that the young lady was not uh, clearly informed on what's going on in the process, and we will be dealing with that in, in the future. It's, it's just too much to deal with right now, but she surely didn't get the correct answer that she was looking for. Uh, and secondly, I want to say that I have a, a concern First of all, my concern is I talked to as many commissioners uh, as I possibly could talk to, and <clears throat> and I explained to them my concern. I was asking for just uh, uh, less than a week to have the citizens, who are, which one of your commission don't don't then understand that the citizens are a top of the organization chart that the city created. And the citizens should be considered. I know this is not an elected position, but the citizens who pay everybody's salary up here should be considered uh, when you're making the decisions like this. And the next thing is, uh, we said that we did a thorough investigation. I don't know how in the world you did a thorough investigation and hired somebody with a racial. That is understood. I mean, everywhere he's gone, he's had racial issues. And that's if you did a thorough investigation and still hire him, that tells me that you don't have no concern over the <laughs> citizen in Griffin. <laughs> Secondly, I did my I, I did my homework. You can rest assured of that. I've done my homework uh, along with a lot of other people. And we're going to be bringing, you, this is not a done deal. We are here tonight. We understand there's a time limit, but we want to let you know that this is not a done deal. That we're gonna we're gonna continue to work on this thing, and we hope for in the opening um, um, in the opening prayer, it said that we want to be that you want to be fair and just. Where's the fairness and where's the justice? How on earth could you hire somebody? With a racial uh, uh, have racial controversy in a time like this, that's that's a pitiful situation to have somebody when everybody else around the world is educating their police officers on racial issues, and you have somebody with a proven record of having racial issues. <laughs> Not only that, he admitted himself that he had a problem with ar being arrogant. He admitted this in his resignation letter. And he have a problem with um, with being arrogant, and he also have a problem with uh, anger. He admitted this himself. So, but I see nowhere in my um, uh, in, in me uh, while I was searching to find out who we had hired, I see nowhere where he seek to get help. So, but yet you hired him to be the uh, chief of police, and this is a serious time that we're living in. And Griffin have to understand that the change is, is, is not coming. The change is here, whether you want to accept it or not. And if you're looking for yesterday, it went that way. We are, we are moving forward. And if you, if you don't want to get on the boat, and then I'm sorry, you're going to get rolled over. Because it's a, it's a new day, and in Griffin is one of the cities that I love. I've been here ever since my childhood, and Griffin used to be on top. Used to have people coming from all around to Griffin to shop, but now Griffin has has, has died. And if you want to continue to to allow that to happen, and then I'm gonna tell you, it's it's gonna be some people that are gonna roll over you. And I'm sorry that I that I, don't, I wish that we had all day to talk because this is a serious situation. And I I want to, lastly I want to say, we should have been on the agenda. I applied to be on the agenda. It was given to me by the city manager to be on the agenda, yet when I get here tonight, we are not on the agenda. There's something wrong with that picture. Uh, and uh, I, so I just want to say that we need to get this thing together. Hopefully that we can do something to reverse this situation because a lot of heads need, a lot of people need to, need to go. Thank you, Mr.
Thank you, Mr. Bree. I appreciate your comments. Uh, Raymond Jordan. Peel box for you on Mr. Jordan. Good evening, sir. It's good to see you again. Well, good evening <coughs> uh, to everyone here today. Uh, my mother and I and family decided to come this evening to kind of vent our comments. I, I wanted to be here today because <clears throat> since I've been here about a year and a half now, I came in because of the uh, problem and situation that occurred with my brother. Yes, and we're sorry about that. And this is the first time I came before the city council. I've talked to the city manager, and he's always been very cordial and allowed me to come in for impromptu meetings. And I was somewhat concerned today because after being here, I have kind of I basically developed a relationship with the officers where I can I could actually sit and talk with them and really understand a little bit more about their backgrounds and who they are and how they feel about their position as being a law enforcement officer. And it was not until Chief Hinton left that I actually went in to see the city manager. And he and I, we talked, and he allowed me to express what I said. And I was not too easy. I'm 61 years old, and there's a lot of things I've done over my years that has given me the opportunity to kind of speak boldly and not really worry, worry about how people feel about me. Amen. And I will do just that. And one of the things that happened that night with my brother is that guy, when he, when he shot and killed my brother, he also made one mistake. He left me alive. <laughs> and when he did that, and then he drew down on me, I did not call on God. I did not pray. I did not have no regrets. He made a mistake, and I did my job. And I want to make sure I, I, I say some things this evening because... I feel, after talking to this intern chief, Major Homer Daniels, I have developed a relationship with the Griffin Police Department as well as the, the city manager. And I'm, I'm going to be very careful what I say because we all are adults, and this is not driven by anger and emotions. We have to be able to talk about things that we have facts on, not things that we think we know about and we don't know. And today, I want to say this. I met with one of, the city, one of the city employees that works for this gentleman here. And we met. I don't want to say the name, but I asked that person. I said, what do you think about Mr., first of all, the major? But before we did that, I said, what do you think about Kenny Smith? Is he a prejudiced guy? Is he a fair person? And that lady looked at me and said, he's a fair person. And I thought about that. Because I told my mother, I said, before I come here this evening, I'm not here to incite any feelings or uh, represent something that I don't know. I want to speak about what I do know. That's very important. We have to be careful today what we say, and we have to know what we're talking about because there are some very complex things that are going on in our country, and a lot of us have not done enough due diligence to find out what the real truth is. And she said to me, she said, I respect that man. I said, I'm glad you said that because I'm going to speak to the city council tonight, and I think this gentleman is going to be there. And from my observation, he seems to be a genuine person. I looked him in his eye, and I asked him a question. I said, are you prejudiced? I didn't have any problems with that. He looked me in my eye, and he said, no, I'm not. I said, the understanding I have is that there will never be a black chief of police in this town. And I know the history of Griffin. Griffin is a very, very interesting place. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. And he said, let me just say this. I'm going to make the decision not based upon color. I'm going to make the decision based upon the facts. And I said, thank you very much. And then later on, we had Homer Daniels selected as the intern chief. And then I started doing my due diligence a little bit more. Found out Major Homer Daniels. The word was he didn't have the ability of writing well. Well, the guy has not only one master, he has two masters. I'm not that. And then I turned right around and I asked the question. I said, uh, have you been to chief school or do you understand anything about that? 
And he says, yes, I have. And he told me about how long he's been here. And then I became very prayerful what I'm going to say next. And I said, well, Mr. Smith, according to the newspaper, made the decision. And then I said, well, why did he make the decision? So I went to see Major Homer Daniel. I always call him Major, and he's always going to be a major to me. But, and we talked. And after he talked, I walked away. But it wasn't until I spoke to that young lady today that formulated my opinion of what I'm going to say now. I'm not here to judge the city council. I'm not here to judge this gentleman over here, the city manager, because it's easy to point fingers at people until you get into position. My only request is I cannot say anything about the decision because I don't have all the facts. The only thing I want to close in my statement is if you decided to make this gentleman who I don't know anything about. I didn't go over the internet because it wasn't any concern to me. That's up to the city council, the community, and the city manager. The only thing I came up with, and I said to my mother, and I said this to Captain Daniels, I said, if they're not going to make you a chief of police in this town where you've been here for 20 plus years or 30 years, when a majority of the people who don't understand law enforcement, when the guns go off, the majority of people run away from the guns. They run away from the sound. But when you look at these officers, with this uniform on, when the guns go off, like it did that night with my brother, and your life is on the line, and you got a chance of living or dying with my brother stretched out there, and the bullets penetrate a vest that I knew all about. And this family, only family in history of Georgia, did not file a wrongful lawsuit against anybody in this town because we're not interested in making money on the death of my brother. And I asked the question. I said, the worst thing, the, the good thing they should do for you, Major, I said, if they don't get you back in your position, at least give you the right respect of over 30 years, went to all the schools, did everything you need to do, protected these people in this town. The least thing they should do is restore you back to your original rank of Major and let him retire with dignity. At least retire. If you don't want the gentleman, if you don't feel he is qualified to do a job when he's done it in narcotics, wife here, anybody can be a law enforcement officer and lose a family. This man stayed in law enforcement and kept his family put his son in medical school, his daughter in, 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 in nursing school. And I drove by the man's house, and I was somewhat embarrassed. And the only reason why, and I said to myself, the reason why he didn't have a better house, because he didn't want anyone to think he was doing something illegal. So what he did was he lived, he lived in a little shack of a house to keep his dignity, self-esteem, and be a man. And then out of all that, if he's not put as chief, you should at least consider restoring that man back to his rank as a major and let him walk away or stay. But I'm not here to judge you people and the city manager. He should stay. But all I want you to do is just consider how difficult it is to put a uniform on, get shot at, and then continue to walk around not knowing when one day is going to be your last day, at least respect that man and his family and say, we respect a job well done. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Cornelius Daniel, uh, 1200 East McIntosh Road. Mr. McDaniel, or Mr. Daniel, eh? Good evening. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the city, on behalf of my family, on behalf of my father. Um, I'm a little concerned. The decision has been made. The decision is a decision. I'm concerned that the decision because of the background that I researched about the gentleman that you all hired. The gentleman 
has a, a controversial background. And in a city that's lacking employment, lacking opportunity for uh, a vast majority of people, uh, I think that the decision is, is, is incorrect and should be moved for reconsideration. I stand with these citizens, I stand with my father, and I stand with my family. And uh, I think that at some point in an organization that has some of the best training, some of the best trained officers, some of the best trained leadership in the state, in the nation, you know, our, our neighbors get it down in Lamar County, in, in Thomaston. Our neighbors at Gordon State College get it. They, they hire people from the city of Griffin. Yet the city of Griffin won't consider their own. And, and to me, that's the issue. When you go, and, and, and I, as I addressed in my letter to all of you all, I don't care what side of town you go on, where you go in this town, people are, have nothing but good words to say about my father. And that's something that we can stand on. And I'll close in saying this. I met a lady about two weeks ago. Yeah. Her name was Mrs. Ruth. And we met over at the Bridge in the Gap, uh, the Bridge in the Gap uh, meeting we had over at Fairmount. And Mrs. Ruth is about 65 years old. And Mrs. Ruth, this is what she told me verbatim. She said, your dad being chief was the first time I've ever felt that the city has done something for me. And in a day and time where race relations with police officers have gone so far left and so far right in so many circumstances, I think that we need to move and reconsider this gentleman based on his background, based on his reputation, and based on his history. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. And next we have Mr. Zach Holmes, 357 Moreland Road, on the, on the Board of Education, one of our fellow elected officials. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. Nice to have you with us. Thanks, sir. Good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I, I want to, uh, I had a concern. I, I don't want to speak uh, for any individual. <clears throat> and I'll tell you the concern that I had. Uh, with, 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 I, I've watched and I've done a little research. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a performance type person. I, 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 I look at the performance. Uh, and I look at fair, being fair and equitable in how we do things. But most of all, being consistent. I, I look at, and I, I look at, I see, uh, Chief Tommy Jones back there, fire department. He was able to be developed, grow, and become the fire chief. Local guy. I look at the other departments in the city. You have cultivated and allowed people that have stayed here, dedicated themselves. I see, I see a lot of transit people drive in, work, drive out. But we got people here that live here. They've gone to school. They've made themselves qualified for upper level positions. I am one of those. I, I, I retired in 2010. I, I became the EMS director for Spalding County. So I know that process. I know I, how, how it can be done, and, and, and the problem I have with the process is I was disappointed to hear that Mr. Mr. Daniel and, and some other qualified employees did not even get the professional courtesy of an interview. We, we just hired a school board superintendent. And I'm not ashamed to tell anyone, he knows my feeling I didn't vote for him because he didn't, first of all, meet the qualifications. But it was given to him consideration, 
professional courtesy to allow him to interview. Guess what? He's our superintendent. But if you look at his qualification versus everyone that applied, don't stack up. But he was given that opportunity because he's a community guy. He's lived here. He's dedicated to the community, and that's why he's the superintendent. I have seen most of the gentlemen that probably applied within. I've worked with them on the street level. I've worked with them on different scenes, and I've seen them go to school, get educated, get the credentials. And my thing is that that, that disturbs me. What, what message are we sending? Because we've, we, you, you've had one this week to leave. He's going to be the fire chief down in, I mean, the police chief in Forsyth. You got one that's going to be the police chief in Thomaston. My question is, why can't we allow these people that have dedicated themselves, live here, educated themselves, they can do everything from a street level policeman, fireman, or whatever, but they can't be the police chief. I'm, I'm, I'm really very disappointed. I love my city. I love my county. I had an opportunity to go elsewhere, but I came back here, and I've been a, a community activist ever since I've been back 1982. You all see me in various places. I love my city. Like, like I, I had conversation with Mr. Holberg. Love our city. But one thing I've noticed, a lot of our educated, qualified people do not come back because they don't feel like they have a chance or an opportunity in this city. And for a, a lot of citizens to see that Homer Daniel, and see, I don't even know if everybody know that he didn't even get an interview. He didn't even get an interview. Just out of professional courtesy, yes. he should have got an interview. Yes. Out of professional courtesy for his time that he gave to this city. That, that's what hurts me the most. He didn't even get an interview. Whether you were going to uh, appoint him as the fire chief or not, he should have got an interview. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Next signed up to speak is Robert Taylor, P.O. Box 1981. Mr. Taylor. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How you doing? Good, thank you. Mostly everybody knows me. I'm a retired police officer from this city. And there ain't too much that I want to say. I just want to ask one question of this panel. Because since I have turned my life over to Christ and given up doing police work, I recognize that lightness and dark cannot occupy the same space. So I want to ask every one of you here on this board, men, women, black, white, examine your heart. Examine your heart and ask yourself the question, do I despise people of color so bad that I would bring in a man who has such a dark cloud over him that others have already spoke about. And that's, only, that, that's the only thing I would ask you to ask yourself that question. Examine your heart. Don't examine anybody else's heart here. Don't examine mine, because mine is very plain. I'm very transparent. Examine your heart and ask yourself, do I really despise people of color that bad that I would bring an overseer into this city, into the police department? Next on the list is uh, Mubarak Mohammed, P.O. Box 1228. Mr. Mr. Mohammed. 
Good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing? Good, thank you. I would actually like to yield my time to Reverend Benoit, if I can, if I may. I'm sorry, who's, who? Um, this gentleman right here. Yes, sir. He, he actually didn't get here in time enough. How you doing, so, sir? Good. You're my name is Reverend person. Jeffrey Benoit, president of the National Action Network. Uh, I have gotten... Just, I, I apologize, but Reverend Jeffrey, what was your last name? Benoit, B-E-N-O-I-T. And your address for the record, sir? Um, 971 uh, Evans Road. Evans Road. Yes, Rex, Georgia. Rex, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Benoit. Yes. Um, as a community activist, I got several calls from citizens here in Griffin, and they were outraged, outraged that they pay this council's salary for them to negate the cries of this citizen of the city. These are your taxpayers. These are your taxpayers. They're not just dissidents that uh, have come here from Syria or somewhere. These are your taxpayers. And they are concerned about the direction their county is going. They're concerned that you would have an interim police chief that was good enough to set as an interim, but yet not good enough to be selected as a chief. Now, they went on their own and did their own due diligence and went on the Internet and being, was able to look at the tattered past of your uh, choice for chief with his Facebook postings and with the history of uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Ironically enough, tonight before I came here, I was looking at the news, and another gentleman was fired from the city of Atlanta for Facebook postings that were tattered in their comments, making the racial slurs or the racial epithets, and these are the same things that this gentleman resigned for. So I'm going to ask the question, would in fact this would be the same person that you would find best qualified for this position? Because, see, you can retrain anybody with any new training, but you can't change and train what's inside. You can't train that. And I would just say to this board, look at the citizens here. You know these citizens. For years, I imagine they've been here. But they are concerned. Police brutality across the United States has been something of a concern. And I would think that everybody would agree. But the problem here with policing is that police are not checked. I coined the term gypsy police. When, in fact, you do enough in one location, you resign and go to another location and take that same poison someplace else. Only because their supervisors fail to elevate said reports to post, to have post investigate them and pull their certifications. So I'm going to say to you, the board, you have an individual who come by way of resignation, mm -hmm. by way of comments publicly posted, by way of showing forth what is in their core soul spirit. You can't change that. You can't change that. And what had taken place in Jonesboro, Arkansas, probably should have gone to post for investigation. And if, in fact, we're going to allow that here in Griffin, Georgia, what do you think you are welcoming to Griffin, Georgia? The individuals that they will police will not just be these people here. They'll be you as well. They'll be you as well. And I will say to you, as an activist, I am constantly dealing with issues across the state of Georgia where police are utilizing the system to get away with murder. Young men shot in the back, shot in the head, hands up. As recent in DeKalb County, Air Force veteran, butt naked, shot dead. And the individual said he lunged at him aggressively. Well, you already made a 911 call for backup. All you had to do was wait. You chose not to wait. This is the mentality of policing. So I would say to you, the board here in Griffin, Georgia, don't take your job lightly. Don't take your job lightly. Policing has become a major issue in this county. The record reflects that the citizens came here tonight.
to air their grievances. Tomorrow we'll tell the story. The future will be yours to tell yourself. Thank you. And the, the last name on the list is Reverend Wendell Bell, 416 Washington Street. Reverend Bell, yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening to the commission, people supporting. You know, I feel bad because this is one thing that this city got to learn. When I read in the paper, about this man's background. Go back a little bit. When you all can make him acting chief, why not make him chief? And y'all should not, man been in protecting us so long, not only me, you all. And I feel like you all turn his back on. And I'm not ashamed to say what I got to say. We better wake up. It's time to change, Griffin. What do y'all have in mind to bring an outside in? My father always told me, if I'm qualified to do the job, let the man have the job. Now, we don't see none of you all out there protecting or riding out there in the street. But this man got to put his life on line. And just think in y'all heart right now. Look deep down in y'all heart. What, how do this man feel? 30-some years on the job. Don't accept him. Mr. Smith, you know, you got a leak in the hole. <laughs> because all of them didn't start until that meeting that we had Saturday before last. That's right. You found out what was going on, you found out how much was back then. Right. You made a trust under the table. And I look you in the eye, Mr. Smith. Be a man. And think about what are you doing. I don't hate you. I love you. Because I love everyone. But you know what, Mr. Smith? Commission. All of us. Let's, let's change this thing. I'm not like be like the other man said. We want to see Homer Daniel Chief now. Amen. So what's the problem with it? Give the man a chance. He made y'all gave him a chance for thirty something years fighting for you. Why not now? And you know what? I'm going to leave it closed. Every one of you all up there, go home tonight, look in the mirror. Get down on your knees and pray for a change. Because you did major home of danger wrong. But you still teach to me. Thank you, Mr. Bell, and uh, thank you all. As we move on with the agenda, the consent agenda is next. Consider approval of minutes of the January 12th, 16 regular scheduled meeting of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Take a motion for empty minutes. All right, who, who made the motion? Mr. Brock, Mr. Holberg. Any additions or corrections? All in favor, please raise your hands. Approved. Second item on the consent agenda. Consider on second reading an update to the City of Griffin Sewer Use Ordinance. 
The ordinance has been updated to comply the City of Griffin's National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permits. Make a motion to approve. Mr. Holberg made a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Flowers, I believe it was. Oh, Ms. oh, Ms. Ward, seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Item number five. Consider approval of the purchase of a SUPFEN heavy-duty SPH 100-foot mid-mount platform aerial fire truck from Williams Fire Apparatus for the Fire Department for the quoted amount of $1,098,963 from the 2016 SPLOS funds authorized prepayment to allow for cost savings and amend the budget accordingly. Motion approved. Chief. I have a motion, Mr. Ward, to approve. And the second was? Second. second with the comment. Mr. Holberg with comment. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, Union Chief Jones. Original yes. SPLOS was $1.2, $1.3 under we were trying to do it while 1.1 1 .1 was our we goal. 1.1 1 .1 was what we had anticipated in the SPLOS. Right. Thus, the reason for the prepayment, we can save and be within a couple thousand or a thousand dollars of that amount. And the arrival of the uh, Around September. Yeah, we, we did it through a group purchasing with the Western Fire Chiefs Association. We anticipate SPLOS funds to be in the bank February 18th. And this is, an, is this a bonded project or an unbonded? Uh, this is a bonded project. Yes, yes sir. This, this and the fire station together were bonded project. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Seven zero. <laughs> Item number six. Consider for approval the purchase of a caterpillar Caterpillar Olympian 50 kilowatt natural gas genset and installation from Yancey Power Systems under the NJPA contract in the amount of $26,424 and amend the budget accordingly. Any motion? Motion approved. Sword made motion approved. Second? Second. Mr. Holberg, any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. Item number seven, consider purchase of the ITRON open way meter reading infrastructure to replace the smart sync AMI system in the amount of $1,461,266.47 using funds from the Municipal Competitive Trust short term flexible operating account and amend the budget accordingly. Mr. Bosch, good evening. Good this evening. This is as discussed in our workshop. Yes, right. sir, and it, uh, the agenda item does include the uh, true check change out and then uh, also it has zero effect on rates. Okay. Make a motion and we approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to get those? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Who was the second? Oh. I did. Mr. McCord and Ms. Board. Thank you. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Item number eight, consider approval to amend the fiscal year 15-16 electric department budget appropriating $13,020 toward tools and small equipment and to be transferred from scrap metal sales account to purchase office equipment and furniture for administration and wellness equipment for the operations center. center. So moved. Mr. Cord made a motion. Second. Mr. Brock or something. Mr. Brock made a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Appears unanimous. Number. Nine, consider an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin at Chapter 2 Administration and the UDC at Article 4 Procedures by clearing, stating the intention, clearly stating the city's intention to not discriminate on any cognizable, that's a tough word for me, basis in its service delivery, including the approval of license permits and other regulatory approvals. Mr. Whalen, do you have any comments on that, sir? Yes, this ordinance is a little unusual, first off, in that it's going to amend both the Code of Griffin under the administration chapter and also the Unified Development Code, which is basically your zoning ordinance uh, under, some, under the procedural chapter. This is not the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which you've probably heard a lot of controversy about. That's <coughs> a bill that's designed to provide a right of action uh, for citizens who feel like they're religious freedoms have been encroached by government action. This is just the opposite. And this is really similar to a bill that was introduced just last week in the legislature. And essentially is saying that 
government, whenever it acts in the service delivery or the extension of benefits, needs to act in a non-discriminatory manner. Now we know that because we've been you know, dealing with this now for many years, many decades, uh, that government has to act fairly and non-discriminatory. At the same time, government needs to act efficiently. There's generally a allocation of resources, whether it be budget, it be staffing, it may be other manpower resources that have to be considered. So what this ordinance would do is really give us some basis. If a person came in, made an application for a license, if we know that issuing that license may be a controversial issue, it may be a parade license, for example, to conduct a parade, it may be the Aryan nation of skinheads, or whatever they're called, uh, and it might be the same type of license that we would give freely to the Chamber of Commerce, we would waive their application fee, we'd waive the application process, but when somebody who is disfavored comes in, we might make them jump through more hoops, and it's basically saying, no, you treat everybody alike. Amen. And you treat them fair. So that's really what it's designed to do. Do we have a motion? <coughs> Sword motion. Second, Mr. McLemore, any well, discussion? It's not perfectly clear, but this is first reading, by the way. Yeah, so we'll correct. have second reading. I have a motion to approve on first reading. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Number 10, consider an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin, Georgia, Chapter 78, streets, <coughs> sidewalks, and other public places by enacting a new Article 4, Utility Accommodation Policy and Issuance of Right-of-Way Permits. A motion to approve. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Holberg, a motion to approve? Second. Let, let me just Mr. briefly. You second, Mr. McLemore? Yes. Discussion. Just explain that this is being requested is of us by the, I, I don't know it's working much tonight. Yeah, it is. Here it is. Uh, but by the uh, GMA <laughs> telecommunications program that we participate in, we're seeing a number of cus uh, companies, uh, one called Mobility, uh, one called um, Crown Castle who are coming in and they're trying to obtain permits from the state and local governments to build telecommunication infrastructure within our public rights of way, but they're not going to provide services themselves. They're referred to in the telecom industry as backhaulers. And we've got, under the federal telecommunications law, we've got to deal with them. We've got to make our right of ways accessible. But this ordinance will give us better ability to manage and to condition those permits that they're asking for. Uh, we basically have, have recommended it here that a base rate of $5,000 per mile for facilities. Uh, we have an application pending. It's been pending since early December from Crown Castle, which I think will resolve within the next two or three weeks uh, okay. on their permit. Any further discussion? This is also a first reading. Sorry. Thank you. All in favor, please raise your hand. Appears unanimous. Number 11, consider a resolution to amend the City of Griffin fiscal year 2016 operating capital budget in the amount of $60,564.41 from the general fund for cemetery operations, 8240 to replace the air-conditioned furnace at the cemetery office complex, and 20000 to replace broken sidewalks and install an irrigation system at Memorial Park and recognize a $5,000 donation from the Military Affairs Committee. Let's make a motion that we approve. Second. Okay, Mr. McCord, Mr. McLemore, <coughs> discussion? In favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Unanimous, thank you. Number 12, consider denial of anti litem notice received December 18, 2015 from Attorney LaQuetta S. Pearson on behalf of Ms. Vara Henley, 828 Ray Street, Griffin, Georgia, for alleged physical and mental anguish incurred on July 11, 2015, at approximately 2.30 p.m., when officers of the GPD mistakenly served a no-knock search warrant at a residence, and this allows uh, this lady to continue on with seek recompense. Make a motion to approve. Mr. Holberg, moved Do we approve. Second. Mr. McMore, second. Discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? 6-1. Thank you. And similarly, item 13, considered denial of anti litem notice received on December 22, 2015 by then Chairperson Doug Holberg from Attorney Jeffrey R. Neighbors on behalf of his client Rashida Coggins. Also allows 
her to continue seeking her recompense. All in, any discussion? Make a motion to approve. Mr. Holberg, make the motion. Second. Back more second in discussion. All in favor? Six opposed, six one. Thank you. City Manager Court. Mr. Just Smith. some dates to remind you of the, the director's goals workshop was rescheduled to this Friday from last Friday, so we will be away from the office this Friday down at the senior center for our director's goals workshop. Okay. So all the directors will be at the senior center this Friday if you're looking for us. And remember, we have the Intergovernmental Re Archway Retreat February the 4th and 5th. And I think uh, Kristen sent out a, an agenda and all that. Did you guys get that? I know okay. I got it. Okay. Just wanted to make sure everybody got that. Right. We'll be meeting at the Senior Center at 7.30 on the 4th for breakfast prior to leaving to go to Carrollton. Uh, the the city's having our procurement department's having a vendor expo and trade show at the Wel trade show at the Welcome Center uh, Thursday from 9 to 4. This is to allow vendors to come in and get information on some of the significant projects that we have coming forth, like the building of the fire department, the restoration of City Hall, some of our public uh, infrastructure projects. So we'll have vendors there. If you know any local vendors that want to be a part of that, ask them to come to the Welcome Center. What's that date again? Pardon? What's the date on that again? Uh, Thursday the 28th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, got a note today from Mr. Bosch about a tour of the Vogel plant uh, with the Vogel 3 and 4 edition. That would certainly be an all-day trip on February the 18th. If you're interested in that, please let us know. It's over just south of Augusta, so that's definitely an all-day trip, but we need to get reservations in for that trip if you are interested. And unfortunately, since our appointments a couple of weeks ago, we have already had a resignation on the Environmental Council. Uh, I'm not sure who resigned, but after the first meeting, they resigned. So. I guess <laughs> what they wanted, huh? Yeah, that's not a good thing. But my question to you is, do you want to go back through the advertising process, or since we just so recently made appointments, would you just like to go back to those people that may have applied for it and pick somebody at the okay next meeting? We had several good applicants. We did. So I think I we had I some yeah. that left over, if you will right. call it that. So. If We'll bring those to you at the next meeting, and we'll make an appointment to that board then, if that's okay. Okay. Thank all you. right. That's all I have. Thank you very okay. much. Mr. Whalen. Just briefly, following up what Kenny just said, if you've never been to Plant Vogel, I would certainly encourage you to go. This is one of the few operating nuclear plants, power-generating plants in the country. They're really expanding. It's the first one that's received uh, permits from the federal regulatory bodies to and add the new generators. I went twice back before 9-11 when security caused to shut down the series, but uh, I think you'd find it very interesting. It's worth the day's experience to go over there. Okay, so now, when you get up at night, you don't have to turn on the light switch, right? <laughs> you can just glow in the dark. <laughs> Mr. Tolbert. I want to thank the um, speakers coming here today. Several of you had the opportunity to talk to on the phone or in person over the last couple of weeks. One of our major responsibilities <coughs> community and one of our goals is to make this a safe, wholesome community. And first, I want to recognize our law enforcement folks that are here today. Um, we support our law enforcement 100% in this, in our, from this board, and we know what they, they do for us. And whoever our chief of police is and whoever our police officers are, we need to give them all 100% of our support. Um, we as a community have a lot of issues, and we know it. We have financial accountability issues that we've dealt with. We're continually working on issues dealing with economic development, but we cannot turn the ship 180 degrees overnight. It's going to be one degree here, another degree there, and hopefully one day, if my kids and your grandchildren and your children reflect back on this community, they will be favorable and want to come back here. So um, we do take your comments and, and respect what you've said, but I personally have 100% confidence in any decision that Kenny Smith has. He loves Griffin. He's been here for 12 years. He will do whatever possible to make this the best town that we all deserve to live in. And again, thank you for being here. And those that are in law enforcement, God bless you, and thank you for what you do. It's 
there's anything we at the board in this community can ever do for you, we're here to support you. Thank you. Back to Mark. Mr. McCord. Um, I got a couple things. Number one, uh, need to get with, I guess the board or Mr. Smith had a citizen to come to me about the plaque at the golf course where we wanted to put Mr. Jolie Mathis, get his name erected on that new monument that we built. That was, that was one thing. And, the, and I want to echo some of what Doug said, and I, I might take a slightly different turn. Um, everyone, especially all the board members know, and most of the police officers know that I am a uh, all Griffin type of guy. So I, I'm all about Griffin. I'm all about people that we have on board. I'm, I've supported um, Donald Britt for the chief, even when I wasn't on the board. Since I've on, I'm on the board, I can't um, lobby for one person over another. But when I was not on the board for four years, I did lobby for a, a friend of mine because I feel like we got some good police officers, um, part of our force, um, top to bottom, black and white. And I, I think it, it shows in the, in the work that they do. Uh, also, with that being said, we selected a process amongst the board. The, the city manager came to us with a direction of making this process fair because just like I may have a favorite, every one of us can collectively have a favorite and it could be a different person. And why would they pick my person over Mr. McLemore's person so on and so forth. So it was a, a process. I feel that the process was fair. I think the people selected to serve on the committee, they all had a chance to, to look at all the information. If something is found uh, in this background check that has been done by the city manager, all this stuff, he's offered me an opportunity and I'll come back and look at it again, 11 stacks of uh, information to read over. Um, They've talked to people. I have not had a chance to call and interview people in these other communities because I was not a part of the process. But everyone who was a part of the process had the opportunity to do so. Um, I heard a few disparaging things about Mr. Smith, and I publicly, as I publicly say that I respect uh, Mr. Daniel and the police department, and I would have been very happy to see someone from the inside be selected. I will say this about Kenny Smith. Since I've been here as a city commissioner, I think I've served longer than anyone up here. He has made some very tough decisions um, since he's been on board. We've had more African Americans, or as I say, black people, put into positions of leadership than any other time that I've been elected. We had our first black electric director that was under Mr. Smith. I didn't, I myself, and think that was going to go over well. And it did not start out well, but he was willing to make that decision, not based on race, not based on longevity. He, he made it based on who he thought was the best person. He looked at all of the information, he took it in, and this was a person that he chose. And it turned out to be a very good decision. We have uh, black department heads in our uh, city right now. And, uh, we, and, and I would have to say that there's been some good choices. He's made some choices that weren't so good, and he admitted to those. If this selection of this chief turns out not to be what he thinks it is, along with this board, I'm sure that he will do what is necessary to get the right person in place. I, I commend everyone for coming down here, speaking up, for Mr. Daniel, I, I think the world of Mr. Daniel, I wish he could be our chief. I, I, if I had to make a choice, I definitely would pick from inside, whether it's Homer, whether it's Britt, whether it's Mike Richardson, Curtis Keyes, Daryl Dix, I mean, all these guys that I've been knowing for years, I just feel like they are qualified. I'm, I'm, I'm a Griffin guy, so I'm a little bit harsher when it comes to Griffin. <laughs> I, I just think, not to say anything bad about you Chicago people, but People from Griffin, <laughs> just we, we do things the Griffin way, and I, I, I believe that to my heart. So, uh, again, don't give up the fight. We got to keep, continue. We got people like Mr. Daniel's son, who is going to be a dentist, 
and he's going to be a fine dentist because he's from Griffin, and his dad is going to make sure of that. We've got to stay behind our people in our community, and if it means coming down here to voice our opinions, by all means, do so. But again, thank you all for your support of Mr. Daniel, and I assure you, from where I sit, if I feel like this is not a good appointment of the chief that is selected, I'll be the first to stand up and say, we have the wrong person. I have not had a chance to go into all of this, to find out, to call these people, do my background investigation. I want to trust in the process, because had the process come out the other way, and Mr. Daniel had gotten the job, and people from the other side of the community been in here to say the same things about him, I want to give this gentleman the same right, and that I would research that. So I want to give him a chance, see what happens, meet him for myself, allow you guys, bring him to the churches, bring him to the community, and allow you to ask him those same tough questions that you asked tonight. But this board, we're not part of the, of the selection <coughs> committee. We select the city manager, the city solicitor, the city court judge, and the city attorney. That's, that's what we select. You guys select us, we select them, and the city manager runs the day-to-day -day operation. <coughs> He, I don't really even think he had to come up with a selection committee to pick the chief. He, he, he could have taken it upon himself to select the person that he thought was best, but it, I, I think it, it went a long ways to say that he <coughs> selected people from all over the community, um, not, not just people that looked like him. It was, it, was <laughs> it was a mixture, and people had a chance to vet to research, to interview, that we were not allowed to do, but he, he selected a committee made up of the community. So it was not just <coughs> white people or, or black people or people from uh, policing. It was people from the community that had some input and in, in what happened, and that's why I feel good about the process. So that, that's all I have to say on that, and <laughs> thank you all again for coming. <coughs> Sir, thank you so much, Mr. George. Brock. If, uh, I, I, my comments are going to be very brief. I'm fa fairly new. This is my second meeting as a city commission, and wow, very, very robust tonight. But I think it's good. I think it's good that the citizens will come out and speak their piece. It's good we've got a venue where we can do it. It's good we've got a board that will sit and listen. I am tickled to death to be part of this board. And, and I, again, I, I'll echo some of the things Rodney said about Kenny Smith. Kenny did a yeoman's job working with this police chief situation. And the top eight, the top eight, and it was done by a non-biased group of people that did it, that do, didn't know any of these people. So I think probably we did the fairest way that could be fair to everybody concerned. And I wish everybody would go home, as, as it was spoken of earlier, and sleep on it and come out tomorrow with a smile on your face and let's see if we can't unite, be together, and continue to make Griffin better. Thank you. Uh, so for a change, I totally agree with Rodney. I think <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> All right. I agree what with Rodney. Okay, like 98% okay, agree with Rodney. Okay, that's better. Thank you. Um, but I think I very much what you said about the process and echoing the sentiment of the community and the people that we have in place to help us make these decisions. Appreciate everyone coming out. Sword. Um, I just would like to um, thank Mr. Smith for the job that he does for us. And I've already told you in the beginning that, that, that I trust your decision. Even though this decision was not made totally by you, you are the only person that we hire and that we, that we manage. Um, and I think from the time that you came, you've shown me that you were fair. And when it comes to the hiring and firing process, you, all, you would always choose the best person for the job. You never looked at color. Um, I think the process was fair. I think we got enough legal advice and instructions from the beginning in order so that it would be fair. So, um, I, you know, I kind of feel like you've been beat up on a little bit tonight. So I just appreciate what you do for us. Thank you. I guess I'll finish it up. I also thank the folks that spoke here tonight. That's part of our participative democracy, and I like that, so thank you. 
Uh, I think what's unfortunate to me is I followed the processes we all did. We set the process, and it was monitored by others on the committee, including Ms. Harps, who's uh, president of local NAACP and a great lady. She sat through the entire process, too, uh, and it was based totally on uh, a factual process. Unfortunately, in my opinion, social media is probably the worst enemy of truth there is. And a little bit of social media and the stuff that's out there uh, can quickly uh, create a erroneous picture of someone. I can tell you from having reviewed this file that's that tall and all the interviews and, and with all the folks he's ever worked for, black and white, a lot of African American commissioners and other that weighed in, this man, in my opinion, is an excellent choice. And so some of this social media circus, I find, in my opinion, the man's been slandered before he's ever got here, and I hope he will uh, have the opportunity to reveal his true colors, because all we hear from him in all the places, from the elected officials and the other people he worked with, that he is colorblind, he does a good job, he has great relations with the African American community, and so the smear that was done him, in my opinion, some of the social media is unjustified, and hopefully the record will show in the future that uh, he's excellent, and I think Mr. Smith did an incredible job of being fair and impartial the whole way through, and I'm proud of uh, what you do for us, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. All in favor, please rise. <laughs>